Crouch, oh. com, Go ahead. Michael Crouch, com 3325 persuasive speech. If you could show the audience. One, two, three, four, five, six, and cameraman is seven. <laughs> Go. Okay, so breast cancer kills thousands of people every year. Um, this is sad, but it's not the biggest killer of people in the United States. Um, heart disease actually is, according to the, Amer or the American Center for Disease Control. Um, thinking critically about this disparity will help us to better allocate our funds when giving donations to worthy ca causes such as this. The biggest piece of data that I can provide to you about this disparity is the infographic you have in your hands, which comes from an article on Vox.com. This shows different diseases and different causes that get donated to every year, like the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, Movember for Men's Prostate Health. Uh, you can see that breast cancer gets 250-some-odd million dollars annually in research funding. However, they are number four on the list when it comes to actual deaths from breast cancer. We can see from this infographic that heart disease kills half a million people every year, but it receives a quarter of the funding that breast cancer research receives. So we can see this obvious disparity between what's actually happening, the effect that these diseases have on the people of the country, and the money that goes into funding them. We see that there's this, this disjoint. So from here, we can go to where our money is actually spent. According to a report published by the Susan G. Komen Foundation, their annual financial report in 2013 showed that only 18% of the funds donated to the Susan G. Komen Foundation goes to research. 18% of 253 million dollars went to research. Now me as a donor, I'm thinking when I'm writing a check, yeah, this is going to help find a cure, when in actuality, it's probably going somewhere else. For example, the Susan G. Komen Foundation published another report regarding their CEO salaries. Their top two, C or their top two executives make a combined salary of almost a million dollars a year. Now me as a donor, I want to know that my money is going to make a difference in somebody's not life, not pay somebody else's salary. According to an article written by um, NBC News, the Susan G. Komen Foundation has, been, has come under scrutiny because of this disproportionate amount of money that their CEOs make in comparison to how big their charity is. Now, the Red Cross Foundation, or the American Red Cross Association, has three three and a half billion dollars every year in revenue three and a half billion and their ceo makes five hundred thousand dollars a year whereas the susan g komen foundation has an operating revenue of three and a half million dollars every year and their ceo makes four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year so you see the american red cross has a much bigger operating revenue and their ceo makes only twenty five thousand dollars more than the susan g komen foundation ceo and they by far have a much smaller operating revenue than the latter organization. So there's another disparity in the organizations that we choose to donate to. Now that we've looked at this data, let's look at alternatives, the ways that we can change our donating habits to better fit a utilitarian model. Now, we all know that here in America, you get what you get. However, if you donate to causes in other countries and develop in the developing world like Africa, Southeast Asia, your dollars are going to go a lot further. In the one of the articles that I've referenced, they talk about an uh, quality uh, adjusted life year. Now what that means is how much more quality does your donation add to a person's life when they're afflicted by a certain disease. So a $50,000 donation to say the ALS uh, an ALS society would give a person afflicted with ALS one quality adjusted life year. However, that same $50,000 donation, if donated to say an organization that buys bed nets for countries afflicted by malaria, that can give 500 
adjusted quality of life years. So it, your money goes further. It affects more people. You touch more lives by giving to those kinds of organizations. Now, there are a lot of tools that we can use to uh, discern uh, what organizations are deserving of these funds. For example, we have uh, charitywatch.org, which allows you to see which organizations uh, spend on their administrative costs as opposed to their programs. So how much of their money goes to keeping the organization running as opposed to actually doing stuff in the world. Givewell.com is one where you can see which companies uh, operate and how many people they touch per dollar spent. So with the economy being like it is, we all have to be critical about where our money goes and how much of our limited spent our donation dollars can go to each charity. So we've seen data about the disjoint between deaths and funds raised. We've seen that some companies are not as transparent about where your money is being spent. And we've seen that there are tools out there that can help us be more discerning about where we give our money. In closing, I'd like to quote the 39th president of the US, Mr. Jimmy Carter. I have one life and one chance to make it count. My faith demands that I do whatever I can whenever I can, wherever I am, for as long as I can with whatever I have to make it